Now, as you know, the superannuation in this country is compulsory for all of us, and the big industry funds are effectively run by the unions and big business, and they're supposed to have our interests at heart. But Australia's largest superannuation companies being accused of deliberately exploiting older, vulnerable women to boost their profits. Australian super's got billions of dollars locked up in retirement savings, but two widows have told Sky News that the company has put them through hell to avoid or delay paying out their late husband's money. Jonathan Lee has this exclusive report. Sorry, just... It's just been hard. It doesn't take much to see Linda Chapman and Eunice Brook are exhausted with anger and grief. Sorry. It does. It, it wears you down. It wears you down. You can't, you can't, you can't function all this. Both husbands passed away before Christmas. The men had set up accounts with Australian Super and named their wives as the beneficiaries of those accounts. But the process of retrieving the money has left the women with the firm belief that Australian Super strings along grieving widows like them to draw fees and maximise company profits. It's not their money. It's our money that we saved for. I've told them several times on my calls that I thought they were delaying um, the process because they didn't want to release the money. Ten days to process from when my form was sent to them, it's way past ten days. So if they keep saying ten days to process, it's a big fat lie. I honestly did not believe that I would ever get my money. I never, ever believed from the start that I was going to get the money. For Eunice, the process began way back in January. She describes a company that actively prevents claimants from being able to phone or email team members directly, leaving the vulnerable unable to check on uploaded documents to see if they've been received, logged or even acted upon, dragging the process out, in her case, for not just days or weeks, but months upon months. There's always an excuse, there's always a delay, there's always some story why they can't. Eight months in, and she was told she'd have to prove who she was all over again. Straightforward, a form's been filled in. Every information that they've asked me so far, they have. Absolutely everything from day one. I said, so what do you need to verify me? You've got everything. Oh, no, we're going to do verifications. And then the board's got to decide whether to release the money to you. I said, but you have to. It's my money. How can someone decide whether they're going to give me my money? And how am I going to, how are you, how are they going to verify me? Oh, they'll probably ask you to take a photograph of your driver's license next to your face and send us a copy. And I said, that's crazy. But it's the hours lost on the phone that have a warning others to take their money elsewhere. How many calls? I would estimate 20 to 30 calls. 20 to 30 calls. I would call almost sometimes every day or every second day. I need the money to live. She recorded each conversation, documenting her frustration. Is there any indication from them as to what is, what, what is still needed to be done and a timeline? Everything has a timeline. I don't get... I, do, I have my suspicion why they're holding it back because they just don't, and I've said it from the beginning, they don't want to let go of the money, and they have to. You read the Facebook posts and everybody has the same complaints. At one point, Australian Super even sent her late husband, John, this letter, despite previously acknowledging his passing. What do you think of them as a mob? I, I, I actually think it's disgusting what they do. I really do. Linda's story is similarly frustrating. She started her paperwork in January and completed the online process by April, then waited and waited. What got me is I always learnt not to put our, all our eggs in one basket, so we did have another super fund. And that paid out within two weeks. And I just couldn't get an answer. I just wanted to know where I stood. When investigating on Facebook and I saw that so many complaints... I actually made my own comment on that and it was after that that I got the first phone call. As we discovered, the complaints are easy to find. Atrocious company. Four phone calls later and they haven't done a thing. Each time I speak to them, they think of new ways to slow things down. It's been six weeks since I sent the form through. 
I've rung and emailed you a dozen times and I've been told all sorts of lies. I am over it. Customer service? Non-existent. No one can even tell me when I can get my money. We've been trying to sort out my husband's superannuation for six months now. Australian super isn't just the nation's biggest super fund, it's one of the world's largest. It boasts of more than 2.7 million members and managing more than $260 billion of their retirement savings. And while its promotional paraphernalia reads, we are here to help, the Federal Minister Stephen Jones says he's aware of problems. The industry's on notice. They've got to lift their standards, and if they're, if they're not able to do that voluntarily, then the government will look to put in place service standards which are in line with community expectations. Pretty basic stuff, you know. Not too much to ask that if you've got, you know, several thousand dollars invested with an organisation, they answer your phone calls. Not too much to ask. The person across the biggest financial books in the country, Shadow Treasurer Angus Taylor, is watching closely. What are the responsibilities of these super companies? The money has got to go to those members as soon as possible when they're eligible to get it. Uh, and if they're failing in that, they're failing in complying with the law. It's easy to forget that super is big business, isn't it? Well, the truth is that superannuation funds make money by having more money. Uh, and if they're paying money out, they're not getting fees on that. Australian Super ignored our four requests for an interview. It would only issue a statement in which it goes on to apologise for delays. And in a footnote, since beginning our investigation, Australian Super has now paid out both women in full. In Eunice's case, the money quietly arrived without her even being told it was there. How long must she go for, Jonathan? I, I went for eight, nearly nine months. How, how, how much longer are other people going for? How many people don't have that spirit of fighting? With some three million Australians entering retirement over the next decade, the spotlight is on super companies to not just deliver returns, but return the money to those whom it belongs. It's a good question, isn't it? How long would it have taken if Sky News Investigations reporter Jonathan Lee hadn't started asking questions? Let's cross to him live in Brisbane. Great stuff, Jonathan. You're able to get a good outcome there for Eunice and Linda, but it seems uh, from the complaints in that story, there are plenty of other pe people unhappy with the treatment they're getting from Australian Super. Chris, evening to you and evening to those at home. You don't have to look terribly far online on the Facebook page to find complaint after complaint when it comes to Australian super. The minister is also acutely aware of the problems. He's made the point to Sky News that he's fired now a number of shots across the bow of the superannuation industry saying that standards need to be lifted, otherwise he's going to look to implement new laws and regulations. And you have to start to think in this sector it is certainly required. Previous reports have also found similar problems. There's supposed to be a 45-day limit when it comes to uh, uh, dealing with complaints within the sector. In many instances, that isn't being met. I find it fascinating in Linda's case that one company paid out within two weeks and Australian Super took months and obviously only as a consequence of questions being asked as well. So uh, things need to move in this sphere and with more than 3 million Australians retiring over the next few years and relying on their super funds, they need to be able to get access to that in a timely manner. And I also think it's quizzical and perhaps shameful that on the Australian Super website they can talk about the fact that older Australian women are now the ones increasingly facing the chance of poverty and then to put grieving widows, older women, through hell to get the money that is rightfully theirs is downright shameful. It sure is. Now, Jonathan, I was going to ask you whether there are any particular, uh, particular complications with these two cases that might have explained the delays, but as you say, that uh, any problem there is put to bed by the comparison with another super co company paying out within a couple of weeks. You have yes. looked at mainly at a, the Australian super fund now, the biggest one in the country now. I, I happen to have some of my super with them. I think a lot of us do, obviously. But how widespread is this sort of treatment, you think, across some of the other big industry funds? 
tremendously widespread is the answer, Chris, and that is why the government is concerned. It's spoken to all the industry the superannuation funds. As we say, they put a shot across the bow and told them to lift the standards. The problem seems to be getting access to team members and staff members behind the scenes. There's some sort of impenetrable wall that's put up where you can only upload documents on the website. And if you don't have access to those team members through a direct email or a phone call, well, then it's very difficult to resolve your claims. And Australian Super is renowned for being able to, or talking about the fact that they uh, keep uh, they keep costs down, and that is achieved by having fewer staff. You might also say they're able to achieve some of their profits, perhaps by not paying out people when they need it, which enables them to continue charging uh, those fees. Uh, we asked Eunice about that. She said she wasn't aware how much extra money she had been charged before getting what was rightfully hers. You can bet it cost her a few extra dollars. It sure did, Jonathan. Thanks so much. A fantastic report. Let us know if there are any uh, follow-ups and updates after this. Jonathan Lee there, Sky News investigations reporter, live from Brisbane. You would think, right, if you're retiring and wanting to access your savings to go into retirement, or your partner has died and you need to access their, 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 their savings to go on with your life, you'd think they'd take your phone call. You'd think they could assign one person who will deal with your case until you're satisfied. It's not that hard, is it?